is Maria Valencia, and my part of this video is going to be explaining interphase. First, the interphase has three substages, the G1 phase, the S phase, and the G2 phase. The G1 phase is also the gap phase. Here, the cell is preparing itself for the division by maturing, and it's collecting proteins required for DNA synthesis. Next, we have the S phase, or the synthesis phase. Here, DNA duplicates itself. Um, it doubles its content through DNA synthesis. Lastly, the G2 phase is a GAP2 phase. Here, the cell prepares itself for the next stages, restoring energy and material necessary for the meiotic stage. I'm sorry, the meiotic phase. So basically what happens is that the cell is at a resting stage and when ready, it prepares itself for division. Um, the cell is doubling in size and DNA replicates or copies itself. The organelles are also doubling in number and DNA con condenses into the chromatin, which is right here. Okay, so now covering one of the steps of telophase, we're gonna be covering cytokinesis. So it usually undergoes during our late telophase for both meiosis and mitosis. And it's basically the splitting of the parent cell into the last two daughter cells, and they appear shortly after. So the difference between the animal and the plant cell is that the animal cell will form a cleavage furrow in between the parent cell, which eventually will turn into the two daughter cells individually. As compared to the plant cell, we're gonna have, be having a formation of what could be called a cell plate, which eventually becomes a cell wall for the plants and splits into the two daughter cells. Hello, my name is Alfred, and I'll be talking about meiosis. So basically, in meiosis, there's two parts. There's meiosis one and meiosis two. Uh, meiosis one is where prophase happens, prophase one. Basically, crossing over occurs, which we will later explain uh, in the video. And then there's also an anaphase. There's also an anaphase one where homogeneous chromosomes are separated. So as you can see here, there's two. Uh, there's a sister chromatid and sister chromatid, and they become single chromatids. Yeah. In meiosis two, uh, there's only, there's no S phase. Nothing gets uh, synthesized. Uh, sister chromatids are separated furthermore into singles. My name is Angel and I'm representing mitosis. Mitosis is composed of four parts, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase. Prophase is the lung phase and it is uh, it starts the spindles to start to form. Then we move over to metaphase. Metaphase is when the chromosomes actually meet in the middle. Then we move over to anaphase. Anaphase is when the furrow burrow starts to start and that's when the cells actually start to split, sort of, and then telophase is when it completely separates into daughter chromosomes. Yes. My name is Kendra, and I'll be talking about the M phase. So the M phase is composed of G1 phase, S phase, and G2. So in G1 phase, first growth is the first growth period of the cell cycle. In S phase is where the DNA replicates. And in G2, it prepares for mitosis or meiosis. Also, G2 is very important because it checks DNA for any damage, and it ensures that all proteins are needed for cell division. Hi, my name is Alexa, and today we'll be talking to you about crossing over. Okay, so crossing over occurs in meiosis 1, and it is basically the exchange of generic material between homologous chromosomes that result in recombinant chromosomes. Okay, so in prophase 1, uh, segments of non sister chromatids break and reattach to the other chromatids. Uh, this is very important for the normal segregation of chromosomes during meiosis, and very important for generic variation. This is because chromatids held together by a centromere are no longer identical. Therefore, meiosis 2 chromosomes separate and some of the daughter cells receive daughter chromosomes with recombinant cells. This is why offsprings have different sets of genes and alleles and parents. Uh, in the cell cycle, there are three very important checkpoints. These checkpoints are needed because they act as signals in order to tell the cell whether or not to keep replicating. These checkpoints are the G1, the G2, and the N. Uh, um, an important um, component of the checkpoints are the kinases. This is because they allow for the process to keep going. And in order to become active, these kinases must be attached to a cyclin. This makes them CDKs, which are cyclin-dependent kinases. And in the G1, G1 checkpoint, integrity of DNA is assessed. In the G2 checkpoint, proper chromosome duplication is determined. And finally, in the M checkpoint, attachment of a kinetic core to each spindle fiber occurs. And then one very important thing to keep in mind is that in order for it to get from G2 to M, the M MPF is needed. MPF is, stands for mitotic promoting factor. Without this, the M checkpoint will not be able to occur. And also, MPF and cyclin are always go hand in hand with each other, so one of them is high and the other is high. After this, after M checkpoint, they both start to go low as they are reduced. 